So today we're going to be working on this very simple uh, visual effect that you can toss in for concerts, um, small venues. It's pretty much a very simple TV looping with some textures, um, and I think I think you'll be able to get it. So let's just go ahead and dive straight on in. Okay. As we start up here, per usual, if anyone's coming out and they have a new um, file. If you see my tutorials before, I think you know the first starting steps. So what I always like to do is press A, press X, delete everything, head over to this little camera icon, use your scene settings, turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, and to make things fun, let's go ahead and turn on what's in our color management. Let's make the look uh, medium high contrast. Okay, the next thing you're gonna do is head over to the edit tab click over the preferences you'll see here and then what you're gonna do click animation and make sure your default interpolation is set to linear if it's not set to linear uh, you'll run into some issues what are just making it look like it loops but other than that once you have that if you don't want to do this every single time if you're planning on watching my tutorials a lot um, go ahead and set your default to save this startup file because what that'll do is it'll stop you from having to do all this. The reason why I don't set it is because I want to make sure that um, people that are new know what to do. Okay, now <coughs> once we have that set up, <coughs> we're just going to set up our entire workplace. What I like to do is uh, right click this little divider, vertical split, split it by half, do a horizontal split now, split this by half too. Let's go ahead and just set up what we're going to be working with today, which would be the UV editor. And then we can plan on the shader editor as well. So once you have your shader, UV, and then your 3D space, you should be pretty good. Um, what I'll do next is import the TV. So I'll have a Dropbox link uh, in the description for you to download it. If not, you can go on Sketchfab and find any TV. Um, personally, if you want to make sure this all works out, I suggest maybe just using the TV that I use so you do the exact same steps. Now disclaimer on the TV I'm not too sure um, if any of you are gonna be using this professionally or not you're gonna want to make sure um, let's say you go to Sketchfab right so uh, you'll see here um, some some models let's, let me just break it down for you here you turn on downloadable you want to really pay attention to some of these licenses if you're gonna be using this on a commercial use Personally, if you're just learning, I think that no one really minds and just credit them. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of TVs here and I've already downloaded one so we don't have to really search for it right now. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna head into here, file, import, GTLF 2.0. I go into my Blender docs. I do a lot of Blender stuff now. Scene, and I'll just import that TV. I'll name it TV. And what I want to do to start off here is like you'll see it's controlled by an empty, but it's not completely centered. And what I did last time was I just, you know, press tilde or left, press shift A, bring in an empty, plane axis, and then I just honestly centered it right here in the TV. And then what you're going to do is take your TV. Shift and drag it into this empty. You can just leave it like that for right now, I believe. Once you have it kind of set up, yeah, you can see now it's perfect. There's a bit of like this weird janky kind of thing where if you start dropping this in, it's gonna have to you're gonna do each individual one. And personally, I don't really want to do that right now. You probably could just join them all, maybe. No, you can't. Okay, we'll leave it alone. <coughs> Next, what I want to do is is get um, I want to get something on this TV screen here. You see, we have some textures, and it's just green, and we're like, "What's going on?" So you'll see the TV already has one uh, texture. You can't just like toss an image in there, and I don't want to do some crazy mapping. So we're, what we're simply going to do here is we're going to go ahead, press Tab, <coughs> make sure you're on Face Select, click the faces of the TV of the screen 
then we're going to press F to fill and I mean it like joins all the vertices so you have a flat vertice here and then I'm gonna go ahead and create a new material slot all new I'm gonna call it TV screen you can also do this up here if you want but I'm just doing it right here for simplicity press U unwrap now you're gonna assign and you'll see here it's white screen you can put any texture now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in a video file now the other thing so you don't have to do any frame calculations is you're gonna need the images the import images as planes add-on so if you're gonna use too much blender type in within your add-ons import images as planes and you're gonna have to check and select that Okay, once you have that set up, what I like to do here is just import images plain, and let's pull in our Robin. Now, the reason why I just did that, you know, it's not on the TV, but if there's a bit of like math to calculating like the frames, and if you use the images plain, it's just gonna calculate it for you. You don't have to do that. So just remember that number, 100, 1, okay. And then what we're going to do with our TV screen material is we're simply going to bring in our Robin, drag and drop, collect this to base color, and connect this to the emission too. And then just remember 1,269. Okay, now you're looking at it right now, it's like, what the fuck? Like, it's all upside down and all that. Here's what you're gonna do. You're just gonna simply, first you wanna rotate this. So, what I did was I pressed R and Z, and just, you can kinda see as you hold down your mouse, I held control to make sure it just kinda snaps on an even number. And you see it's still cut off. What I do is just select these uh, top vertices press Y, G and Y, and just pull it. And you see now, now your, if you click, pull, wait, make sure it's cyclic. Auto refresh, I think is the word. Yeah, auto refresh. You can see now, your bird is moving. Cool, okay. If it worked out for you, you, Catch yourself on the back. You honestly just finished the hardest part of this. Everything else is pretty simple. Um, so let's go ahead and delete our previous one right over there. Let's just make press tilde and go to the front. Press shift A. Let's go ahead and bring in a camera. Because we need to start seeing what we're doing here, you know? <clears throat> okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and change this one to 3D viewport, hold tilde, view camera, and just make sure we have things kind of centered. And one way to cheat that kind of, or not cheat, but figure that out is within viewport display, if you activate composition guides and you click center and thirds, let's just center, you can kind of get a better grasp of what you're looking at here. And from here, this is up to you and your creative freedom. How far do you want the TV? Etc. Etc. But the next thing we're gonna do um, is probably the second hardest thing. It's just animate the TV, right? So what I did was there's a reason why I parented the TV to this empty, and I'm gonna call it TV controller. And the reason why I did that was now you don't have to like move everything in here, from my knowledge. But now it's because it's on empty, you can just simply animate it. So. I made it 300 frames, and what I'm going to do now is press N, or you can go to this orange icon, and you can see the details of the location. But we're going to be playing around with the rotation of this, so we're going to be moving it on the Z axis a little bit. So what I like to do here is just insert keyframes, make one at the start, insert keyframes, one at the bottom, and now what we do here is so half of 300 is 150 and then I believe half of 150 is 75 
So what I did here was I just simply move move it by let's say like 35 degrees to that single keyframe and then so from 150 plus 75 that's 225 so let's go to 225 and then since we set it to 35 on 225 let's just go ahead and make that negative 35 into that single keyframe and what you'll see here so I kind of just timed it with you know half of that and then half of 150 so it's around the same kind of pacing but it makes a nice little subtle loop here when it comes down to the TV just moving so I like to keep my keyframe kind of like points pretty consistent here so what I would do next is just like so we already have our keyframes set up for our rest of our values. You can play around with the the other rotations, maybe like twenty. That might be kind of fuck. Might be kind of crazy actually. But insert so fifteen there, and then make this one negative fifteen. And honestly, the only, I don't know if I really want to play with my X values. this is good for right now now the next thing we're gonna do here is it doesn't really look like it's like floating like how I had it so you're gonna come into the graph editor now and here's where things aren't gonna get too crazy so you're gonna now single keyframe the Z location in your transform tab just go ahead and hide the rest of these you're gonna go ahead and click modifiers noise and you'll see now our thing is just like jolting and looks kind of crazy. You can go crazy with that if you want. Personally, the way to make it look a little bit easier is um, what you're going to do is up the scale by quite a bit, maybe like 50, and then decrease the strength. So you can hold shift and just like really decrease the strength there. And you'll see. Now it kind of, and you increase the strength a little bit, you can get a bit of a stronger float. I personally, yeah, and from here you can kind of see we have a bit of some floating going on and it's looping. So I'm going to go ahead now and just kind of bring this back down. And what we're going to do next is we're just going to set up our environment here. So do another images planes. And what you can do now is go ahead and just bring in a background element. So I go to a nice little free, so some free stock videos. Pexels videos is pretty good. I just type in like fours. And you can see you get like a huge list of really nice um, green backgrounds. And just make sure it's in your composition and you'll see now you have two videos kind of playing and it creates this really nice effect I can just zoom in too so it looks better because honestly looking kind of funky okay so if you click rendered it's not looking that hot um, let's just tinker with our shader real quick one last time let's turn up the emission strength of a TV screen by like uh, uh, like four so we get a little bit of a glow now the second thing you're gonna do to make the video background kind of feel real in this rendered view is you're gonna click this yellow button environment texture open let's not attribute actually with the purple and then what I did was I just brought in the, I clicked the same exact video that I used as that background and I used it as an environmental map and then what you can do is you can just like up the brightness a little bit. So maybe you make that about four. Um, and then what you can do also with the environmental map is you can 
make it auto refresh too. Actually, I suggest not making the environmental map move just because I think when it moves, it gets kind of funky. There's a lot of stuff. The video is just like 2D per se. It'll get kind of hairy. Okay. Scroll through, make sure everything's okay. Okay, everything's okay. And <laughs> save the file. And what I want to do next is go into compositing. Type in viewer. Type in reroute. Type in reroute. Connect it to the viewer. Viewer, make sure you click use nodes if you're not seeing anything here. Press F12, or if you don't have access to that, click render, render image. That gives us a nice little preview of what we're going to be playing with. And what I'm doing right now is I'm going to show you how to get that very like pixelated kind of effect here. So I'm going to keep it really simple for you. Click scale, pixel, eight. Just drag this over a little bit. Shift D duplicate that scale and what you're going to do is you're just going to go ahead and reduce this down to a reasonable size maybe 0.2 is okay and then you're going to bring it back up and what you'll see here now is it's looking quite pixelated and if you click F12 again you'll see it's going to work as a video but now it has that like it's like cool you know it's like pixelated it's a bit different What I sometimes do now to add a little bit more flair to my work, add a bit of a lens distortion. You've probably seen this in like every um, video I've created. Maybe add a little bit of jitter to get that uh, noise. And that's pretty much it, my friend. So what you would do to render, uh, let's just make this bigger so, oops. Let's make this bigger so you can see what's going on because I don't want to leave you out here in the dirt. <coughs> so click this little printer icon to render. You set your output, destination, whatever you like in your computer. The important part here is file format. What you're going to do with file format is turn on FFmpeg, color management, don't worry about that, encoding. <coughs> make sure the container is MPEG-4. Uh, per personally with some of these uh, all these EV renders for most most people if you're probably rocking a PC if you're rocking one of the new Macs I think you'd be okay um, the professionally lossless is fine like it's not it's not like you're making it crazy amount of reflections or anything like that um, and from there you're pretty much good to go so you're just gonna click render and render animation and it'll show up where you need it so I'll reconvene and uh, render this and I'll talk to you guys soon We've done it. We did it. Um, you know, I think you should give yourself a nice little pat on the back. Typically, people uh, don't take the time to learn. I feel like these skills and these things really do compound. I think if you found that it was a bit difficult, like, don't worry. Um, <clears throat> personally, if I had to tell you the times, the tutorials that I've been messing around with now are like hours and sometimes like one step typically won't work. And it's just like a tiny button so i feel like if you got a bit confused feel free to leave a comment um, in the description or just go back and rewatch it and take every step piece by piece and just really analyze and try to rush through it i feel like when doing these tutorials you see that they're under 10 minutes you're just like we'll just rush through it and get the asset out but just think about what you're learning and the reason why what does what then just tinker with it all so nonetheless Thank you again for watching my channel. I know there's a lot of Blender people out there. And um, yeah, we're just trying to do it. So I appreciate your support. See you around.